Hello everybody, thank you for tuning in and welcome to another tutorial video in the Consensus Labs Interplanetary Consensus Series. Today we're going to be performing a live video walkthrough of all of the steps required to launch an IPC subnet on the calibration test network. All of the steps highlighted today are also available in written format in the online guide that is linked in the description below. I'll be copying and pasting most of the commands today and you can do exactly the same by referring to this online written guide. As you can see from my screen, I will be performing all of the steps today on a system running Ubuntu 20.04. Instructions for alternative Linux distributions are also available in the online guide linked in the description. My live terminal is switched on the left of my screen and all of the commands I will be running in each section will be shown on the right hand side. Let's get started. And I'll begin by simply running sudo apt update. Once that's complete, I can move on to installing my dependencies. You might take a little longer to finish, depending on how many packages you have already installed. With that complete, I can now move on to installing Rust. I'll select one to proceed with installation. And finally, I will source the new cargo path. Once that's complete, I can confirm successful installation of Rust by running Rust C version. And there we have successful confirmation. That concludes the dependency installation and Rust installation of the system preparation. We'll now move on to installing Docker Engine and I'll begin by installing keyrings. I'll then curl the Docker GPG keys. And then I'll make sure the permissions on those keys are set correctly. I'll then echo the new docker information to my sources list. Followed by a sudo apt get update and the installation of docker engine itself. This will take a couple of seconds to complete. I'll then finish by creating a new Docker user group and I will add my user to it. And Docker Engine has now been successfully installed. I'll now move on to building the IPC stack and I'll begin by creating a new IPC directory which I will then cd into. I'll then clone the IPC agent from the GitHub repository. And I can then cd into the new IPC agent directory where I'll issue a make build and a make install infra command. Now this process will take a few minutes to complete. If you've already completed this step or you are familiar with it, please feel free to fast forward this section.
That process has now completed and we can verify success by running the IPC agent version command. We can now move on to initializing and starting our newly installed IPC agent. We'll begin with an IPC agent config init. I then need to edit the new IPC agent config terminal and I'll use nano. Now, very usefully, the init command will pre-fill most of the information that we need. We just need to confirm that the information in our config tunnel matches the information on the right of the screen, which it does. We can save that and finish by actually running the IPC agent using IPC agent daemon. Our IPC agent is now initialized and started. So with our IPC agent still running in the background, we'll switch to a new terminal instance where we can now set up our own wallets. We're going to set up three wallets, which you can do with the IPC agent wallet new command. First time, second time, and third time. Now we're going to need these addresses in later steps, so it's really important we make a note of them now. I'll copy the first one, entire text file. So with all three addresses noted down, we now need to edit our IPC agent config tunnel. And we'll do that with nano again. And we'll now add the three addresses we've just created into the account section of the subnets config. Those three addresses have now been entered. We can save and exit Nano. And we'll now use the IPC agent config reload to reload our config tunnel into our live IPC agent instance. Now, once that's done, we now need to convert these F addresses to F4 addresses, which we can do by using the IPC agent util F to F4 address command. We need to do that for all three addresses. So we'll do it for the first one. Then on to the second one. And finally, the third OS address that we created. Again, we will need these new T4 addresses in future steps, so we will make a note of each one we have just created. And the final step is to fund each of these new T4 addresses by browsing to forsit.calibration.fieldof.network. We'll now set up our validator worker wallet, and we will do this again three times. Once, twice, three times. And again, it's important that we record these addresses for future steps, so we'll make a note of these new addresses. We now need to create an individual 
let's key for each of our new worker addresses. We'll do so with the following command. We put our first validator worker wallet address. And we'll make sure it has a unique key name. So this time worker wallet one dot key. And now do the same thing for our second validator worker wallet address. This time entering the second address we've just created. And this time we'll call it worker wallet 2.key. And finally for our third address. This time work at wallet three. And once this is complete, we will have finished our owner and validator worker wallet setup. With our IPC agent daemon still running in the background, we'll switch to a new terminal instance where we can create our child subnet by issuing the following command. And this will take a few seconds to complete. I'll leave it running in real time to give you an idea of the time you will need to wait. So our subnet has now been created and we again will make a note of the new subnet ID and pop it in our text file for future use. We'll now move on to deploying our subnet nodes. We're going to create three nodes. We're going to use the following commands. Each time we're going to specify the subnet ID that we recorded in the previous section. And we'll also be making use of the three wallet keys that we created a few sections ago. This time we'll be using worker wallet one key. Please also note that in this instance we're using ports 1251 and 1351. Each of the subnet nodes will need different ports and if these are already in use in your system, please make sure to edit these ports. This will take a couple of seconds to complete. Once it has, we will receive a success message. There we are, and again, we'll make a record of all of these details as we'll be needing them in future steps. We can now move on to deploying our second subnet node. This time we're using ports 1252 and 1352. Again, we'll specify our subnet ID. And you'll see in this instance, we're using the worker wallet two key we created a little while ago. This will go through a similar process. And 
And again, we will make a note of our success message details for use in later steps. And finally, our third subnet node will use the same procedure. This time we'll be using ports 1253 and 1353. We'll specify our subnet ID as per usual. And you'll note that on this occasion we are using our third worker wallet 3.key we created a few steps ago. We'll make a record of our third subnet node details. And the deployment of our three subnet nodes is now complete. We are now going to interconnect our validators. I find it useful in this section to run a simple docker ps to list all of our validator nodes and we can then interconnect each by using the following commands. We will be substituting the placeholder names with our container names which you can see in the docker ps list above. So we'll use docker container name number one which we can copy there. And we'll connect that to container two. And again, we can copy the name directly from the list above. And we have success. We'll now move on to connecting container one to container three in a similar process. Again, we'll need to substitute the placeholders. That's container name number one input, and then we'll move on to container name number three. And success. And finally, we will connect container two to container three to complete the interconnection of the validators. We're now going to update our IPC agent config toml using nano, and we'll be adding a new section as detailed on the right. And again, we need to fill in a few placeholders here. So we already have our subnet ID from the previous section. We'll pop that in here. Now move down to the account section where we need to fill in our worker wallet addresses. We need to do this for all three of our worker wallets. That's one done, moving on to number two. And finally number three.
As you can see from the port in the JSON IPC API HTTP field below, we were addressing subnet number one, and we'll use the authorization token from subnet number one that we created in the previous step. Paste that token into the auth token field where we can save and exit nano. We'll now reload the config again by using IPC agent config reload. As you can see, our IPC agent has successfully recorded the reloading of the config tunnel. So all of the infrastructure for our subnet has now been deployed and we will now join each of our validators to the subnet by using the IPC agent subnet join command. Again, we need to fill in a few placeholders, all of which were recorded earlier. First of all, our subnet ID. We'll then input our first owner wallet address. This is the F4 address. And we'll then use the details that we recorded in, de in deploying our subnets earlier for validator address number one. Find that in the subnet validator info section. And finally, we will input our first worker wallet address. Press return. This will take a few seconds to start. And our first validator has now successfully joined our subnet. We'll now move on to the second validator. Again, we'll input the information we recorded earlier. First, the subnet ID. Followed by our second F4 owner address. the validator net address from the second subnet we created. And finally, our second worker wallet address. Again, this will take just a few seconds to confirm. And there we can see our second validator has joined the subnet. We'll now, now move on to our third and final validator. This time using our third owner F4 address. And the validator net address that we recorded from the deployment of our third subnet node.
and to finish our third work audit address. And again, wait just a few seconds. And we have successfully joined all three validators to our subnet. And in our final step today, we can start validating. We'll do so by issuing the following command to run the mine subnet.sh script. And we will substitute the placeholder with container name one of the subnet node that we created earlier. Like so. As you can see, the validator is starting successfully. That's validator one up and running. We'll now move on to a separate terminal instance where we can run our second validator. Same command, this time substituting the placeholder with our container name number two. And finally, moving on to a third terminal instance where we can start our validator number three. Same command, this time substituting the placeholder with our subnet node information that we created earlier. This time the third one. And there we are. We now have all three validators up and running and our IPC agent running in the background. And that concludes our walkthrough for today. We now have our IPC subnet fully running on the calibration network. Thank you for tuning in today. You can reach out to us at any time in the IPC Help channel in Farcoin Slack. And please remember to subscribe to the IPC Announcements channel to stay up to speed with all things IPC. You can learn more about IPC and Consensus Lab on our YouTube and Twitter or X channels and our websites consensuslab.world and IPC Space. We look forward to seeing you all really soon.